The guys around here could be a reality TV they show. They could. They got all their wives. They're probably banging each other's wives. Really? Hey, doing you weird think? shit. I think I don't I don't know, but I have a couple suspicions. Couple. I think there's a few swingers around here. I think like, there's more than a few. I all right, if you're a new. swinger and and you're watching this podcast around our area, just drop a pineapple. <laughs> drop a pineapple <laughs> yeah, down I, in the comments. I didn't so know. CJ knows. So well, I, I don't need to know. <laughs> I already have my suspicions. You just be <laughs> confirming it. Just because I see the way some of them act. I learned that it's an upside down pineapple. It's not just a pineapple because I was wearing a pineapple shirt. Someone made a joke about me being a swinger and I said no. And then someone else goes, well, no, they're not upside down. If there was any upside down, then he'd be a swinger. Dude, you learn something new every day. I've had this prank idea in my head for a while and I've, I've, I've wanted to do it for a video bit. But realistically, it just wouldn't work as a video bit because like just wouldn't translate well into video but it'd be really funny. Um, imagine if like Justin and Megan went out of town because they're like, they're like just, you know, such a nice couple and like oh, they keep their house up. Live in a like, neighborhood. They live in a neighborhood. Yeah, I'm, sure every, I'm sure everyone thinks like, wow, those two are so perfect and nice. <laughs> if they went out of town and like I just went over there and just decked their house out and like up down, <laughs> upside down pineapples, had a flag and everything. And then they come back from like a week of vacation. Like what the heck? And then they start getting random visitors. Yeah, imagine random people start showing up like in their underwear on their <laughs> Doorstep and shit. You put a note on the door that says, thanks for the fuck shack, Dirty Mike and the boys. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd be like, why would people show up in their underwear? Well, normally the <laughs> well, swingers, swingers don't. Dude. I know, but like normally they probably don't show up in their underwear. But, well, you guys they had 16 LED upside down pineapples <laughs> and, a, and 12 Figured more. You guys were so board. extreme. Yeah, yeah. I had to match your energy. Blake was telling me it is, uh, it is illegal to strip in Portland. It is illegal to... Be outside your home and take your clothes off. That's got to be the only thing illegal in Portland. But that's the shittiest but, state. That's the shittiest is, town or city in all of the of United course. States. Yeah, that is the dumbest rule. Carry so, on. But carry on, sorry. Carry on. If you leave your house naked, it is not illegal <laughs> to be nude. See, wow. there's a way around every law. There I swear. really is, especially and, a shitty ass place like Portland. I wonder <laughs> how they figured that one out. A cop pulls somebody over naked. Hey, you're getting a ticket, and he goes, "Nope." <laughs> I left my house naked and he's like oh. he's like but your clothes are in the back okay so I don't want to get super into the crazy laws of each state but then that made me think of yeah do you, are these real like isn't they, it like you, they are there's technically also like it reminds me of recently uh Minnesota like accidentally legalized some sort of strain of of uh marijuana that hmm. just they accidentally did oh we thought it was safe but I guess not. Dude, oh, I've had much. mess ups at is work. That the, like, can uh, you just imagine accidentally writing something legally in the right, law? And, then and you go out and then it? people are like like throwing a parade in your honor. <laughs> but these are more of those uh <laughs> these are more of these laws that were set years ago that no one really thought to change because it almost doesn't matter because they are not enforced. But as far as I know, still, maybe not still, but as far as it says online here, it is illegal to sleep naked in Minnesota. What? I just remember seeing that way back in the day, being so mind blown, and also then not caring because, like, <laughs> why would they and how would they enforce that? It's just one of those ones. There's a few other ones for Minnesota. All bathtubs must have feet. I don't know why. A person may not cross state lines with a duck atop his head. That's what I mean. Is Are those actually real? If you go through a law book, is that law in there? Or is it, like, some weird interpretation of the law? Right. But like I you just can't some transport some BuzzFeed article that they like just push out to the rest of the United States. They're like, well, I've never been to Minnesota, so man, it's crazy up there. How would I know? You know? <laughs> States with the weirdest laws. Some person like some down, down in Barstow California, California they're yeah. like, oh, that's did, what I'm did you believe there's, this? Minnesota's got the weirdest laws. There's a list that goes on and on for each state. Uh, Barstool talked about that, that they, they post like top 10 states with the prettiest people and they just pick 10 states and then they just know that a bunch of people are going to tag their friends in other states and get pissed and it's all for clicks genius there's so absolutely genius. no true fact in it surprising i know I that think, there's non-true things on the internet <laughs> but i wow. think minnesota's like got some of the it is like one of the prettiest states i'm pretty sure did you read <laughs> that on like usa today no i mean they just, I feel he's like just I've pretty sure. That, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think I saw that on the internet. I guess whatever. You're right. 
So anyways. I still don't know if this is true or not. Can you drive barefoot? Like legally? Or Spun is that Bob. is that one of those things I that's think. uh like one of the written illegal rules that is like not, not for sure. Do you guys ever do that? I don't know. I got my dad got mad at me when I was like really young. I was driving barefoot. He's like, You don't do that. You just have so much more control. Do you guys when yeah, when I, when I drive barefoot, I just use my big toe. Yeah. And I like press it down. I'm like, man, I'm really in touch with my car well, right like now. SpongeBob, you, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I was like, did you pull that out of your ass or did you get it from SpongeBob? Like, I don't think that I it's would illegal? drive. No, no I, I don't think I don't think I would ever even try driving with my big toe if I hadn't seen that SpongeBob episode. But since I have, I'm like, this is fun. I'm like SpongeBob. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys don't know? I don't I don't know if no, it actually I, is. No idea. Maybe another drop that down in the comments. <laughs> uh, it's so interactive, we but really, interactive. really, really got going on a roll here. But I would love to introduce this fellow podcast with my fellow friends to our fellow viewers. Yeah. For a second yeah. time, actually. For a second time, I know. We had to redo this whole thing. Some bad <laughs> news. Uh we recorded an entire podcast. And, and it was good. It was really good. <laughs> I mean, as any podcast we filmed, we... And two hours. Really liked it. It sucks because, like, now all that stuff's kind of... I feel like it's gone because yep. how do I, like, tell you it again? Right. And there's a few stories we tell on here that we've all heard before, but it's still fun to interpret them differently. But a lot of stories among many other podcasts that we don't. And how do we get re-excited or even remember no. quite exactly how we told it? So we, we filmed one uh, earlier this week, and this is our second try at it. So, <laughs> And it wasn't our fault. It, something went wrong with the memory card, and none of the audio was recorded. So we're doing this again. We're probably only going to talk about some of the topics we talked about in that one. But, uh, yeah, anyways, let's get into it. We're going raw. And Look, I'm sorry that we took two weeks off. We were busy. We were traveling. And then it was the 4th of July, and I'm sorry I had. Right. Well, no, there was no I time. Drunk. It, there was no we time. Were, <laughs> right. There we was, was no time. We may in. have gone on an accidental four-day bender. Yes. Well, that, that was happened. the problem is that the 4th of July landed on a Monday. <laughs> so that means that uh, luckily I didn't celebrate Friday, but you could have celebrated Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, which is a four-day bender. And it is yeah. for the freedom of our of our, our country. beloved Cele country. We're celebrating it. So I feel like it's almost obligated. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. And, and you mentioned and we did just that. Unless you're a, unless you're a communist Sunday and you Monday. and you hate. So that's what you the mentioned something about it being an accidental bender. It really wasn't. Not it. over here. It, the problem was it was <laughs> Tuesday and I was still drinking. So <laughs> <laughs> that's when things started to get messy. And then it was like, all right, it turned from I'm just celebrating our country to I might be an alcoholic. <laughs> and then I looked at problem. Ben on Wednesday when we were filming the first podcast and he was cracking a white claw. I was like, I couldn't believe he was cracking a white claw. He goes, what? It's Wednesday. We're on the down slope. <laughs> yeah, the it's, it's hump day. What, what do you mean? We're close to the weekend. The winter, I was like, all right. Uh, when uh, Fourth of July does fall on a Wednesday, it's so funny. It's like. You get the down split. Well, we better take the whole damn week off yeah. at that point. <laughs> and last weekend and this weekend is both 4th of July weekend. So we better do that. Right. Too. Let's a just lot say of people did that even this week. Granted, like did. talking they, you, about some of these really rich people where they can just. Anytime 4th of July. I think July they're just trust fund babies. It's on a weekday. But they, they just take the whole yeah, week off. They did, they, they've been down here. I was out. I took my parents for a boat ride on uh, Wednesday night because they hadn't rode on my boat yet. Wednesday. Wednesday, whatever. So we get out and we start cruising around. And luckily, we kind of got out at a time. It was like five. And there were still people at the sandbar, like kind of leaving, going in. But they were out there what? all Don't day. Don't let the dream die. Drinking <laughs> in the water, swimming. I was like, God damn it, you lucky son of bitches. <laughs> Grant, I, I am a lucky son of a bitch, but they really are. <laughs> yeah. Being a trust fund baby would be real nice. Just, yeah. I mean, it says anyone. I don't, ever, I don't know. I mean, I? it would be, but also it wouldn't. It's just like anything. The problem with being a trust fund baby is like you show up. I feel like you just never get as much respect. Mike, you b might be the last no. person I would expect to ever say that. But at the same I time, would. who cares? You got a trust fund. That's fucking awesome, dude. And everyone would love to have that. The question posed, would you get bored? I don't think I would. That's what I mean. I feel like it's you You play GTA, and then when you beat it, and you get the, like, bajillion like dollars, and then it's just fucking boring. You just run around and shoot know, people. Dude. I and feel like some of the trust fund babies that, like, I know that run around here are the most fucked up out of anyone. Well, it seems yeah. like they're always having a good time from yeah, what I always, see. They're always <laughs> drinking and partying because they, they don't have to do anything. So that's where it would get, let's say, like, being a trust fund baby, and, and now you're 38. Now, what does it, do you like have to buy your friends? 
And in that sense, well, unless you, you're a likable person, I mean, which right. a lot of them are great. They're fucking fun to hang around. But even still, all your friends kind of are, are like they have fucking jobs. Right, they're normal they're on people. Yeah. Things. So then it's kind of like, what do you do? That's go more to so Vegas what I for the week. I guess with who? Just, yeah, okay. No one so, can go to Vegas. So there's probably other trust fund kids you could meet up with there. Mike, it's true. Cause they're a little club. Dude. Mike, you're a part of a trust, or you, you're a trust fund baby. What what are you doing? What's your day look like? Dude, I mean, for sure, sleeping in. That's a given. <laughs> Fuck, of what, course. So, like, so what changes? What, what's your definition of sleep in now? Uh, like if you're if you're just sleeping in, that's the motive of the day. That is not the motive of the day. It never is. It's just a luxury I would have. <laughs> All right, what time are you sleeping in till? Uh, depends on what I do the night before. What time are you sleeping? All right, in what time, time, Mike? Just give me time. I. Uh, 11 you sleep until 11 no, anyway mike i'll I'm give you sorry, i'll give you, you one you were setting me up for that one <laughs> that's, fine. On. that's fine that's all fine all right let's that's say fine. one let's say one all right i don't want to be a trust fund baby anymore if i slept till one every day i would become depressed and i, I, think and a lot I of them are. have slept till one many times many times and i probably will do it again but if i slept <laughs> till i've seen it before probably. it's like there's such a thing as like the leg gang girls who maybe are fortunate enough to not even be a trust fund baby but just Maybe take the summer off from college where they really don't do anything. And it's just a, it's an interesting sight to see. And that's not something I'd want to be a part of. And I would hope that I would chase hobbies. I told you this before. I'd like, I really want to be like a, I don't want to say, I want to make music. A I don't DJ? Want to be a DJ. But also I, DJ Mike. I want to, I would make music on the computer. Mike's going to be a DJ and DJ. You still can do that after the fact. That's like- that's I the mean, plan. Later on, or hopefully we can just set this up where DJ, it DJ doesn't and take so much of our time. We just ma- film and do cool, fun stuff, and then can the other imagine? back-end stuff gets taken care of. I yeah. could actually That's see you being world. a DJ, though, Mike. It'd be so fun. But also, there's a certain level of, uh, again, mentioning our friends Twin Sick, how they're kind of like moving up the levels of the DJ ladder. There is a certain point where it's like you have to go through the whole being a rock star thing, and after experiencing what we've experienced here, like it's maybe not something that I want. If there's like such a thing as like, I'm pretty sure Marshmallow has shown his face by now. I don't but, know. But uh, something like that where you know. have this, uh, there's no uh, face to your to your music, but you still That's, get to reap all the benefits. I don't know. I think I'd want my face known. Like with all the negative things that come with fame, I'd want to at least reap the benefits of it too. Imagine being a world-renowned superstar dj no one and knows. you walk through It'd be the crazy. busiest crowd and not a single person recognizes you or like says up. what's up or well imagine this what if marshmallow they just ship the the hat places or the, the little costume and it's really just a playlist like any of those that other dj things they just hit play and they're imagine? like hey just go up there and raise your arms dance around just do whatever that would actually just wear the costume crazy okay. i'm gonna give you a couple hundred bucks so marshmallow is that and then i don't know how i couldn't think of this but daft punk apparently they've never like daft punk is some of the biggest the the biggest dj duo the blue man group the blue man group actually are duplicated well they switch out yeah yeah yeah, they they go to like in miami hey we need to hire a group of and maybe the original blue man group they are there training them but the blue man group's kind of creepy i remember when i was a kid i saw a commercial they were advertising it for the fargo dome after I got done watching the commercial, maybe it was just a really bad commercial, but I was like disturbed. I was like, "What the heck?" It was my first time seeing the Blue Man Group, and I was like, "Mom, I think they just like, they don't know how to talk, and they just bang on little buckets." I think they do know how to talk. No, <laughs> dude, they don't. They, they don't act know weird, how to bro. Talk. They go like this, like they're like. Yeah, they do have the wide eyes. They look like this when they're like, no, I know. I think they do know how to talk, though. Well, I'm sure they do, but when they're they're in concert and you're a little kid, you're like, dude, this is creepy. I don't want to go anywhere within 100 miles of where they're at. All right, we got to bring CJ to a Blue Man Group concert. Honestly, I I want to watch it. I love it probably now. Is it? Yeah, it's insane. I'd probably enjoy it now, but all right, fine. Emergency trip to Vegas. Yeah. I think they play elsewhere besides vegas yeah. no are, no mike so, don't be ridiculous since they are duplicated also to go back to the trust fund thing just to clarify because i'm sure people are confused because we live in a tiny ass town uh the only trust fund people i know are just like the people that come here in the summer to stay at their lake house which is like a lake mansion or their lake cabin but it's a lake mansion um and they just stay for the summer and then they go but that's that's how i run into trust fund kids but anyways carry on 
And if you're one of the kids and you're thinking, are they talking about me? Most likely, we're probably not. No. Oh, I, thought you were I, I, I did too. We definitely, we definitely we are. No, like, I'm like no thinking there's of other trust fund kids, though. Uh-uh. Like, I could probably name five of them. Name I can't them. name them right now. But. Name them, I'll bleep it. No. See, they just die. I just don't. Okay, so you got... Be, honestly, I can't think of any besides for the one that I sat at the bar last night hugging. You got... Oh, sorry. Right, what? right. Hugging the man for, for 10 minutes and me just uncomfortably watching like... So this is what they do, huh? <laughs> I mean, I've definitely probably hugged you guys in a bar for a while. Ten minutes, though? But not There's arguing. like a point when you get... track of time sometimes. You get like all drunk and you're like, I love you, man. That's my favorite. You. That's my favorite Dude, stage seriously, of drunk. I lo- you do that a lot, Ben. You always get that, way, which is good. <laughs> that's a good lover. one. Well, it could be the opposite. You're like, fuck you, man. Let's fight. Let's fight. And that's Thank like the opposite of what you want. Thank goodness that does come out sometimes, too, Honestly, though. That's just cheddar. If, that's if not any of us were drunk fighters, we probably wouldn't drink. You're like That's that would true. suck. Like you'd eventually you'd probably learn your lesson. Well, unless you're really dumb, but I feel like all <laughs> like w- the rest of us would be like, listen, dude, you need to stop doing this or stop drinking. One or the other. Yeah. Yo, but there is a lot of like small town guys that think it's just fine to go out and fight. If you're gonna be a known person for whatever reason, but known as a fighter or a drunk fighter in this case, it's not cool. You have to be still very <laughs> respectful, if that makes sense. Like, what if you're the guy who. Gets culture. Into They're picking yeah, it up, but dude. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, not being a DJ, but like I've seen a few guys that the, you don't mess with that guy. He'll put you in the ground. Like, literally don't even talk to him tonight. Yeah, right. And yeah. then there's other guys that are like, you're looking at me. Fu-. Yeah. And then it that's all it takes. And it's like, yeah. come on. No one likes hanging out with them. Right. Mm-hmm. Pretty no, much 100%. anytime we go out to the bar, though, and I know that one of my friends is like a drunk fighter, though. I always make sure to dap him up and keep him close just in case shit goes south somewhere. But I always yeah. know that that guy, you just got to be tight enough for him to see like his homie mm-hmm. getting, I don't know, looked that funny and that guy will be there. Because I ain't trying to get in a bar fight, but somebody <laughs> that would want to get in a bar fight and he's got your back. I, I got know, kind of a story about that. So uh, all the bouncers at Zorba's are freaking huge. Huge mother. They truckers. are. They're or that. Huge. Yeah, you make friends with the bouncers. Yeah. We're like friends with them. And I'm actually like, I talk to them all the time. Like I'm friends, you know, whatever. They're they're good guys. And uh, when I, I've only, I've had like a couple times where people were, you know, eyeballing me, like kind of trying to pick something with me. And I wouldn't like stood next to them and they were, like, <laughs> and they just, that dropped real quick, dude. Dude, it's, that dropped real quick. Now that you bring that up, super nice like yeah it i feel so like safe at zorba's relieving because yeah. i know them and i'm i'm not gonna be the one to pick a fight but like i don't have to worry about anyone almost to the me. point where you you don't even have to worry about doing the actual fight if there <laughs> was one dude they would literally just come probably like tap them with their pinky and those guys would be sent their bones flying would crumble out of the <laughs> out of the their, their i mean bag of bones would go flying outside of the door it's like no exaggeration i mean you guys have all seen big bouncers but like I mean, he's like six eight, I think, and pushing four twenty, four thirty. I don't yeah, know. I don't, I don't know his dimensions, but my favorite <laughs> picture, <laughs> my favorite picture is CJ <laughs> holding a big bottle, or no, he's holding the big bottle of Grey Goose, and he's and you're it, holding the dude, little one. Yeah, in <laughs> hindsight, <laughs> like a blown up. Yeah, picture. pop that up on screen. But in hindsight, that picture should have been we should have reversed. Reverse. Reverse it. Yeah. I don't know why we didn't, but it was because it was New Year's Eve and we were celebrating. Mm-hmm. But uh, on so e- keep your fighter friends close and keep your bouncers even closer. <laughs> that should be a shirt. <laughs> Dude, I saw a shirt t- uh, on Facebook. I was scrolling through, and some friend I have uh, posted like a compilation of their pictures of friends with Fourth of July. Whatever. Anyways, I saw this shirt. This guy was wearing. It said, "Legalize smoking cigarettes on the plane." On a plane. <laughs> Legalize cigarettes smoking cigarettes on a plane. Can you imagine how much that would suck for everyone else yeah, on the plane? I though? know. I know. It's, it's a joke, but it's just so funny to me because it's like legalize marijuana, <laughs> legalize smoking cigarettes on a plane. I just thought it was funny. You used to be able to smoke on a plane. You used to really? smoke on a plane. Really? Yeah. pretty crazy? I mean, health <laughs> to everyone else aside, that just seems like a safety hazard. Dude, I know. You, that's they used to get. smoke in restaurants. You wouldn't remember this, Ben, because you're you know so young. Like, <laughs> just kinda, a kid. You know, one of those... What do they call him? Kids. Uh, 2000s babies. Yeah. I think is what you're Anyways, for. Um, yeah. When I was a kid, we would go into restaurants and there was a smoking section and a non-smoking mm-hmm. section. The the smoking the section air didn't do same. shit. It yeah. was all the same air. It was like it was like a like a half wall. 
Maybe. <laughs> and like, the top half, the important yeah, half is open. Is open. Yeah. And anyways, yeah, you, so you'd smell that. Um, or like I remember we'd go a place and they'd be like, all we have is the smoking section open. My parents like, oh, wait, we're not eating here. Yeah, um, I remember that. But anyways, my grandparents from my mom's side, they all were heavy. Well, my whole mom's side of the family, all heavy duty cigarette smokers. My mom doesn't smoke cigarettes, um, but the rest of them, they all smoked. And my grandpa... He did not care. Like, I mean, t- towards, like, the end of his life, uh, he would just smoke right in the house. And you would go over there, you would leave, and your whole body would reek of cigarettes. I remember my mom, like, getting us home, like, come on, we got to get you in the shower, like, trying to, like, clean me off as, like, a kid and stuff. But it's yeah. just 13, walking around smelling like cigarettes. Dude, like you would seriously stink. It was amazing. It was impressive. They would smoke that many cigarettes in there. I think if you could smoke in restaurants, I probably would end up being a smoker. I don't even like it. Dude, but I just think out I of the, the accessibility. Well, I do not like smoking cigarettes. I don't right. know. Even Vapes cigars. are more accessible than cigarettes. Maybe they have a vaping That's section. That's true, and I don't do that. But the, dude, the vaping section's all just bumping music. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's it's like Ken, Ken and all of his. <laughs> that would be really funny. Yeah, they, like <laughs> there used to just be booths with the smoking section and booths without it, and now the vaping section has LEDs everywhere. And <laughs> Yeah, and like, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> All we have open is the vaping oh, section. No. Oh, oh, God I'm damn not it. going back there. <laughs> not because of the smell or anything. It's just the people. <laughs> <laughs> the characters you see back there. Oh, dude, dude, I think it's so funny, though, how many people vape. And vaping has to be as bad as smoking it is, cigarettes. It is, dude. It is, 100%. And I guarantee in like 15 years, we're going to be watching TV or whatever we have for consuming our entertainment yeah. at that point. And there's going to be the commercials that go, if you smoked da 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 jewel mango pods, you are entitled to $15,000 due Cat, to... Yeah. Compensation. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, lung cancer and all these yeah. things. And everyone's going to be like, Call are you number. kidding me? I didn't yeah. know that you could die from these... Well, you want to know something? Think about, think about this. Well, even back in high school, they used to have those little like e-cig pens. I'm pretty sure I've told this story before, but we would we would go to the gas station and uh, like get them right, and they were just like it was like a literal pen. It was before vapes. It was before anything, and it was just called an e-cigarette. You would just puff on this thing. It had like maybe five hundred or thousand puffs, but we would just buy it'd be like twenty bucks, and we'd just crush that thing in a night. <laughs> but uh, Anyways, I remember all my friends like, dude, it's just water vapor. It's just water vapor. It's not bad for you. I'm like, yeah, right. Like, I mean, it's there's no oh, way that shit I, ain't I bad mean, for you. I remember, like, looking it up, trying it, and, like, doing all this. As far as the vapor goes, that's not what's going to hurt you. It r- genuinely is the extreme concentrated nicotine. Dude, I disagree. Among other things. I, dis- I agree but, with the nicotine part, but I disagree. It's not just vapor because have you ever been in a vape smoker's car? Yeah, the windows, it, are, the all windows are all coated. They're all coated. So if you, there's like that coating to them. And if you spill that shit or whatever, that's in your, that you're coating your lungs. The other thing I just thought about is like, I remember the rigs, you know, where you got the thing and people are packing the, you pack the coil. That with the I think stuff. was worse than think the about stuff it, dude. You're nowadays. literally heating up a piece of metal around a bunch of cotton or whatever it was like that you know that yeah it, there's no way it's like good for you it's definitely not good but i think it's a lot worse than what people think it'll come but, out one but day. the thing that i always think about which I, I don't vape i don't like smoking um the few times i have like done it i always just think that shit just coated my lungs mm-hmm. and then i go to the gym and i start running and it's always in the back of my head like man i feel like i can't breathe as good right now <laughs> Last weekend, I offered Evan a thousand dollars to stop vaping on the spot. I had my Venmo pulled up, thousand bucks. His name typed in. I said, "I will press send if you agree and shake my hand right here." Just because he, dude, he vapes constantly. so much constantly, and it really became apparent when we were riding back in the truck for fourteen hours, and I literally got out of the car smelling like his <laughs> vape flavor. I know. I was like, dude, I will pay you a thousand dollars right now to quit. And he was like, honestly, I can't do it. That's actually pretty cool of him to know. Like most people, probably myself included, would have went, deal, thrown the vape in the lake. But even if you would have vaped, uh, vaped like a couple times, but like tried to quit. But okay, and but that's I, true. So he told me that and he goes, so Ben to. just offered me this. He typed it out on Venmo, this and that. 
Uh, I just got a brand new vape. Uh, <laughs> it's middle of the 4th of July weekend. And honestly, I just didn't want to do him dirty. I didn't want to say yes as much as I wanted to. He's just like, that's something that appeals to me in the future. So it's good news. No, I, that was a one-time deal. Okay, that's fine. I was just... That's yeah, I was in the pocket of, of liquored up. A, a deal like that still would appeal to him whether or not it happens. But he was like, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it to him. I knew I was going to be lying to myself and him. So called no deal. I mean, it's yeah. pretty good of him. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I respect that. But still, I guess, I don't know. Imagine being so addicted to something. For $1,000, you, you couldn't quit. Yeah, you wouldn't. Maybe, then again, I mean, if, want to. Yeah, if he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to. It's yeah. one thing. Especially like the convenience factor of it. Going back to like. If it was still legal, like I'd probably smoke cigarettes in a bar. It is extremely convenient if you are addicted to smoking nicotine. How many nicotine pens or whatever, like pods or whatever they are, always around, constantly going around. I mean, yeah. there's so many people that smoke those things now. I bet it's the same as people smoking cigarettes back in like the 80s or 70s be, yeah. or whatever, back when they were very popular, even even probably the 90s. But so, uh, speaking of quitting. I told myself that I was going to shave my mullet off after the fourth. Oh, okay. I had a, I don't know if I could do it. I, I, I should, I, I, I want to, like, like, I think Mike. I'm gonna, I can always grow another one back. Wasn't that much work, but I've gotten so many, like just, you know, just people are like, fuck yeah, sick mullet. Uh, I think I just, it's a look. I it's think weird. Mullets, it, have, mullets have like came back in style. Mm -hmm. Like Definitely if you would have done it a year or two ago, it was like, that's funny. He got a mullet. But now you having a mullet, it's just like, he's not mm. trying to be funny. It's just his mullet. Right. And there's and other even, people with him. It's crazy how trends come on fast like that. Cause then let's think in 2010, if you had a mullet, it's just Bruh. like, you just don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually though. Everything comes back around. They seriously it does. Like and the, for the most part, as far as if you're lame now, of, just wait long enough yeah, and you'll be cool again. It's with anything like redecorating a house or fashion or anything. But it's like now with the mullet, most people are like, just love it, loved it when it was in the eighties or whenever it was. Love it now. And then some people are like, That hairstyle, get rid of that. That was supposed to be <laughs> dead in the eighties or whenever the mullet was popular. I think it's I kind of know. a look. I yeah. think it is too. I really like it. I miss it, your mullet, Ben. That Ben looks pretty good. You look like a freaking pretty but, mischievous with that. Yeah, you did. Right yeah. You looked like the trouble. Stripes. I was gonna yeah, say that like was trouble. full blown D Gen. I like that kind of haircut. Man. I was on my worst behavior when I had that cheddar. Yeah, well, that was cheddar days. Was, yeah, I was like, I. I, I don't know if I could. Around, I behaved the same <laughs> with the mullet, but I legitimately would be like lighting shit on fire. For <laughs> actually, not putting though, them out. I stopped wearing sleeves for the longest time too. <laughs> Yes. Look, dude, you're Look back. Do oh, shit. <laughs> Where'd no, they I, go? I did think about that too. I was like, Mike, I might, I might Are cut you, myself. I might uh, start me cutting my hair word. into a mullet. That'd be kind of cool if we both had mullets together. And then he drops that news on me. Jeez. But that's kind of what I'm getting at is just far the the joke of not being able to quit. I like can't bring myself to do it. I don't think you should. You're one I, with the mullet. I get emotional. You refer to the mullet as. A whole separate entity. Yeah, like it's the, the mullet. mullet. Yeah, the mullet. What's up, baby? Show some love to the mullet now. Right after, right after you give him a kiss. It's like fuck it. so Whoa! You think you can just run your hands to the mullet first try? You gotta ask the mullet if it's okay. <laughs> hey, is it okay? It's yeah, he says it's cool. A pretty. That's a pretty funny like just icebreaker or something. That's funny. That's like one of those things that it'd be really funny to make into a video, but it's like almost would be easier to make as a cartoon. It's also weird that we call things the and a. So it's like when we're it's going like out on Liver King. When we go out on the boat. Oh, don't get me going on Liver King. We're going out on the Ryan's boat. boat or your boat. It's still like, just it's the, boat. the boat. We're going out on the boat. It's so weird. Or even just like. Yeah, it's if, like when, when objects get almost a personality in their own. The boat. Right. But sometimes it's not. They, mm. they don't get their own. Ryan's boat the isn't shop. any different than the boat. As it's funny as. that everyone refers to our shop as the shop. <laughs> Yeah. Think about that. Like everyone's got a shop around here. Yeah. We go into everyone's the got shop. A, everyone's got a steel shed. Basically, we're going to the shop. The shop. That does get tough the because shop. the the can mean two things. Like I can be Ken. Go grab me the chair, or go sit in the go sit in the chair, right? 
It feels weird saying that. But we start I don't know. Chair, that sounds pretty normal. The chair has... Go sit in the chair. Yeah, go sit in no, the that's chair. No, that was a no, pretty... Exactly. That was right. a normal statement. Word. But the chair has no significance. It's not important. It's just You're just directing to it a single chair. I could go sit in a chair, and then Ken could pick any of them. But I'd go sit in the chair. That's one of them. But... Where are you going with this, so, Ryan? I, no, no, but then you talk about the shop. Like you say the shop or the boat and you know what you're talking about. Maybe not. No, I, I think do. It, yes, I, I agree. I, I agree. But it also depends who says it because clearly like we have certain like ties and affiliations to certain things. things. Gang. Affiliation. I guess it just circles back to then how does this sound? Hey, we're going to go out on a boat. <laughs> it's like. We're going out what? on a boat. <laughs> Whose boat are and you going on? You, <laughs> you have questions? <laughs> well, which lake is it even on? <laughs> We're going on an all lake. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm going to go uh, hit Oh, really? Who's a lake? Boat? There's an English teacher out there right now that is like, oh my God, you guys are so freaking dumb. Did you learn nothing? There's just anything? certain things that I just never got. I that was, was one of them. We're going to go on a boat. Actually, which one? I used to put a uh, in front of words when I was reading. Third grade, very traumatic experience for me. I got pulled out of class and everything. And I was that kid. The letter A, not U H. Uh, or you would say uh. Are you, you saying U H is uh? Oh, U H. No, like ah uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, like peanut just, butter baby ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the letter A. Yeah, I don't know. Sidebar though. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, I already told you guys this, but. For the people of the podcast, because it seems to be a thing that everyone knows, I am now unshadow banned on Instagram. No oh, way! And congratulations. We'll just pretend like I just told you this. For I the first can't time. believe I hear. I have to hear this two times. No but way. no, because it's a thing, and a lot of people actually been commenting on my. They're like shadow banned, yada yada. I'm not anymore. Look my name up. I'm not shadow banned. It'll pop up. Please look. All him thank up. you. All thank you to Abe though. So shout out Abe. This is such a subtle plug. No, he's a fucking man. No, your Instagram. Oh, yeah. And also, if you're not following, hit the follow. (laughs) No. If you're not subscribed to this podcast. I'm just glad because I I debuted that I was shadow banned. I figured it out on the podcast. And one thing that gets me so excited about this podcast is that uh, since we're elaborating on things that we like and want and don't like and need and, and make our channel work and don't, so many people have reached out to us genuine um people that can genuinely help us out that have their head on straight it's like so it's so great like i mean there's i'm just saying there's a lot of emails that are that are just like hey big fan and asking for this and that and they're good they're bad they're weird they're funny but like a lot of the people that ask us um if we need help with something that we mentioned on the podcast is like pretty high and it's like really good to read like you know for example that like wide open ranch post like there's a dude who's just like we make those really we can help you and then i talked to him on the phone and he's just like we'll get her straightened out so like i just appreciate everyone listening that has reached out mike is always so willing to give out his phone number too you know how many subs out there have mike's number just because he just willingly trusts and no one abuses it no but it always backfires on ken it yeah. really does. Well, and me. Ken hates when we bring attention to this. Poor Ken, he gets like random mo- phone number calls all the time. Just, just look at how many red. Oh, uh, yeah. Ken God gets a damn, lot. Dude. And, and Ken's number got floated around somewhere from some business documents. So there's stuff like that. But <laughs> Ken's like, exactly that's why you can say find that. It. I don't even want to say this, but no, I'm not going to say it. Mine is incredibly public. Really? Right. In- Insanely so public. Oh yeah, like, the most public number. It probably is out there more than ninety nine percent of phone numbers in the universe. <laughs> no, that's an exactly right. right. <laughs> yeah. But out of, out of all of ours, mine is the most out there. It really is. And you, do you ever get calls? No, never. That's crazy. That Please don't crazy. start looking for my number and calling me. I will get so sad. I won't even be. <laughs> nah, I mean, we, I won't even be mad. Dude, I will just talk be about sad. just an inconvenience <laughs> of having to change your phone number. Mm-hmm. Dude, I couldn't. I don't, I, I mean, I, how do you explain that to your grandma? Just everyone <laughs> who already doesn't barely know what your phone number is. So would you guys oh consider this like it, but. my number is like an extension of me. Like I don't <laughs> want to change it. My number it's is like squid games. It's been, yeah, I, I might as well have you. it branded on my wrist. Oh like, yeah. No, it's like, uh, 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 stranger things. Yeah, yeah. I like really might as well like have that because like if I had to change it, I would just be like, I'm not even the same person anymore. 
<laughs> it's really that important to you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I really like my phone number, too. Because of all it's the zeros. seven. No, I'm just <laughs> Yeah. I know two phone zeros. numbers, and it's Mike's and my mom's. Really? I know my dad's really well, and I can kind of, I can struggle through my mom's, but if I had to, like, go off the top, it's my dad and Ken's. Also, I remember, like, speaking of phone numbers and your dad, I just remember when he was, like, going through his phone, and he was asking me to help him out with something, and this is a while back, but he, he had... N- borderline no numbers saved compared to your average person he doesn't no I numbers go, saved. well it's something that is about ludicrous. something in the i know it's crazy that, yeah it's just and like it's because it used to be really hard to transfer your contacts from phone to phone it used to be this pain like you go hey can i get the drywallers number you go yep you ready like he would just that. memorize it yeah I, I go incredible i think you have a some sort of skill that most people don't have here <laughs> Well, I called him the other day asking him a couple of questions and I hadn't called him in probably like three years. Uh-huh. And I call him and expecting Benjamin. Oh, and he was hello. And he goes, hello. Hey, Ram man. Uh, hello. At, you oh, know, you can totally he's trying to figure it out. He's trying to figure out my voice. And I, I think I said, hey, Randy. And I go, what's up, Ram man? And oh, then- Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, that's funny. Going back to... The people that watch the podcast that reach out, though. Mm-hmm. The best. The best. The best. It's also really cool when you meet somebody and they are like, hey, man, I uh, listen to you guys' podcast the second that it goes out. Yeah. And uh, you guys, like, get me through the work day. Somebody that you would Dude, totally not expect. I met right. the kid on the 4th of July on the lake who sent us the Pelican. No way. Yeah. Seriously? Did Kevin make that? I mean, Kevin didn't make it. <laughs> no but. way, dude. That kid just lied to you. Wait, did he? Yeah, so he was like, I made the pelican. Yo. Sent it, and I was like, maybe. You, I was like, you See, did? You talking no, to Kevin. Kevin got that made from I'm like Fiverr. Vistaprint. Wow, I just, no. oh. No, maybe he's Wait, the one who the printed Fiverr it. Kid. Maybe Kevin consulted a, a local oh. company and he just printed it. You think? Basically, Kevin just went to this website called Fiverr where you can get anything made, period. And he said, hey, I have a buddy. And he li- didn't even probably I give him a backstory. Rattled, and said, I was like giving I this need, kid so much love. You need to make Ken into a pelican. And then he just printed it out. And or maybe we were I stoked. misinterpreted because I was drunk. I don't know. But he, in, regardless of that, just forget all that. When you meet <laughs> subscribers, you meet people that watch, you're like, what's up? What's up? But when they say I watch the podcast, it's like it's like a whole nother level. They they they've like spent VIP. so much they've spent they so much VIP time trip. listening to Yeah, they to know us. you and they they always happen to be the cooler. They like the interaction is always cooler because they're just right. I don't know, they just are cooler. It like, is they're just a lot a, chiller. It's like, a different group. They're like not sure. so like I don't we know. try to keep our it's YouTube better. videos like digestible for everyone. I mean, that's yeah. the goal for really anyone on YouTube. We stay in our niche, but like Keep it digestible for anyone, but for anyone also to listen to a podcast of anyone, there's got to be, be about some. It, yeah. yeah, you got to be about it. I mean, realistically, if you listen to all these podcasts, it's almost like you know how we act. I feel you get a better mm-hmm. idea after a while. You can kind of see it. How we act, how we interact, get especially if it, you yeah. watch it, you can see our facial expressions, everything. Got Bush? You definitely do if you haven't tried the best products from our sponsor today, Manscaped. Taking control of your yard is important, and these products are so good, you're going to want to show off your new bush-free yard this summer. Save big and be the most hygienic version of yourself by using our code Wide Open for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Manscaped has been keeping us fresh down there for years, and if you haven't tried it, now is the time, fellas. Whether you're looking to go bald like an eagle or just in the need of a safe trim, Manscaped is dedicated to helping you level up your full-body grooming routine. The grooming package that I use is the Performance Package 4.0. Inside is the best in the manscaping industry, and first off is the Lawnmower 4.0. This trimmer right here is designed to reduce grooming accidents and shave hair on loose skin thanks to its ceramic blade and advanced skin safe technology. Don't worry, no need for night vision goggles here. This trimmer has an LED light to allow you to mow the lawn even after the sun goes down. Next up in the performance package is the Weed Whacker. This finely tuned nose and ear hair trimmer will make sure your nose hair isn't going to scare off any potential visitors. And instantly add some pep in your step with the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Spray On Toner. Included in the performance package, you get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and Manscaped's patented Manscaped Boxers. But it doesn't stop there. Manscaped has a bunch of other products on their website to help you maximize your confidence and grooming game. Listen, guys, you have to get your manscaping tools somewhere. Support this podcast and get 20% off and free shipping by using the code wideopen at manscaped.com. 20% off 
and free shipping at manscaped.com with our code wide open. It really doesn't get much better than that, fellas. Back to the program. Yeah. I don't want to knock us off track again, but if someone, this is a thing that I think we should get for the shop. If someone has a giant, if they, if you make flagpoles, I want a giant ass flagpole. I'm talking Perkins quality, oh, car Perkins. dealership quality. Say no, say less at Perkins. Yeah. The largest American flag possible outside of our shop. And I want it lit and concrete in the ground as tall as building codes will let us. Yes. Big ass American flag. And they flag. pay for it. And maybe we work out a deal where you pay for it and install it for free. And, we, and then we the have, rest comes out of Ken's paycheck. Yeah, yeah. No, we can do that. There's a little bit of wiggle room there, I think, this month. And every company's like, we're like down if you fly. Expensive. Super expensive. That's kind of what I thought as soon as you get to cementing in the ground and like just the flag alone. I think an American flag... It's got to be the size of this podcast room. Yeah, bigger. it'd be bigger, bigger, dude. bigger. And I think those flags alone are like a thousand bucks. But would it get all ripped to shreds if you don't? I think they're pretty tough. Yeah. I think they're pretty tough. Gosh, yeah. you would literally hear that thing probably inside. <laughs> <and it was laughs> You're like, big. I like the idea of lighting it up too. Evan is yeah. like, look, guys, I don't complain about much, but <laughs> I, can't I can't live <laughs> at this <laughs> shop after this flagpole was it put in. So would we? Put it out at the track or, I mean, out at the or land? Right or on the corner. Right in the corner. Right next to our big billboard mm -hmm. that we we're going to put out at the at the land. Mm -hmm. It's right on the highway. We could do American flag, but then also, like, the police, like, uh, flag with the blue. Oh, with the blue. Just to kind of butter them up a little bit, yeah. too, yeah. you know? Jeez. <laughs> Imagine. They're like, oh, shit, we can't, we can't do it. Dude, you just put a sticker on the back of your car. They're like, fuck, I got to let them go. That's we put actually the, we kind put of a below. thing, though. It yeah, is, I know. Oh, for sure. I think those people are just genuine supporters. I don't know. I think I, most I mean, are. Yeah. I think and I'm not saying are. I'm against it. I'm just saying no, we just I'm do totally that there. as a strategic play. We get a flag that says, I love the DNR. <laughs> <laughs> That's no. just it. We're they're fine. Like, we're, they're like, I didn't even know we had a flag. <laughs> no, it's custom. We had a custom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we saw. We were looking all over, but you didn't. So we had them custom made. Don't worry. We got you the patent. The so other I, side says, the give the DNR more power. Whenever I think of anybody. That's a shirt we should have. Oh, my God. Make a shirt that says, give the DNR more power. <laughs> what can we you defund? You walk into Zorba's wearing that, and people would actually be like, what the, the fuck? Fuck, <laughs> fuck this guy. What's going on here? <laughs> they would. <laughs> and they would Defund they would, roads. To be honest. Fund the DNR. Some guys would just go, why do you think that? Yeah. Can you tell me? A lot of, there'd be a lot of people that are like, hey. Come, come here. <laughs> when they're around, I just feel Tell safer. Tell me about the shirt. What's the deal here? <laughs> this joker. Oh, uh, no, no. I just I just think that, you know, they just should have more power. <laughs> They'd be like, now why would you think that? Like, there are guys that are ticked, dude. <laughs> I always Fuck. feel like when anybody, um, or when we do, actually, <laughs> I'm not saying that we do or don't, but whenever anybody butters up any kind of law enforcement, I'm just like, one step closer to being a mob boss, huh? You know, because, like, that's how it was for them. Like, they just, like, paid them off to step do anything. One. Or, like, uh, Pablo Escobar. But it's just anything you do, even, like, a little sticker. Just one step closer to being a mob boss. Being Speaking untouchable. Of, I saw a sticker today. Uh, a guy had a smart car, which I thought immediately was funny. That was uh, so funny. And, I, and on the back, it goes, before this, I, drew, I drove an SUV. And then it said, before Biden, I drove yeah, an SUV. Oh, yeah. oh my god! And on the back, it said, before Biden, I drove an SUV. Oh, dude. We should buy a smart car just to do that. And I thought it was so just for We like have one. It's on the top of the van. So, that so, one's all jacked up. It looks like a guy who would... Jacked up? Does he just <laughs> invent bejacked a word? Uh, but jacked up. It's like bedazzled and jacked jacked up. Oh, I didn't you just got bejacked way. up. Bro, I'm going to get so bejacked up this weekend. <laughs> Jeez, I'm sorry, dog. No, I, I look at the word. I said More of an that. emphasis on just jacked up. It's bejacked up. It's fucking bejacked. <laughs> you just got bejacked. No, I what love. About, <laughs> it's sorry. like pit my. I ride. just love that he did that to the smart car. Like it could have been on like a, a small a Honda Civic, and it would not have been funny at all. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Made you driving. But it was on one of the smallest car. cars you can buy. Did he look like a total normal dude that you would see just driving a normal Chevy truck? And then there he was jammed in that smart car. Dude, and I go, you just unlocked a, a, a new level. To life. Smart <laughs> cars are outdated. They don't even get that good of gas mileage. When I got mine, I was thinking like, this thing's going to get such good gas mileage. I got like 32 miles of the gallon. Grand, I was driving everywhere with my foot to the floor. But 
Like it yeah, straight up didn't get that. that good a gas mileage. And that's because those things were like 2008, like in 2008, that was great. But nowadays, like pretty much most normal vehicles get that. I could squeeze like 27 uh, out of my car. Yeah. yeah. Really? But also like I think it's still funny that nowadays, I mean, this is maybe we'll just use one brand as an example, Dodge. Like nowadays there is still such a thing, AK Ryan's truck, which is an extreme, TRX. but it's like, Eight miles to the gallon. Like that there, thing there is, is insane, such, it, th- that hasn't gone away. Like low gas mileage vehicles still have not gone dude, away. If you're rich though, you don't give a f- not that Ryan is, but like, I sold it. I, I saw a really rich. <laughs> I saw oh, one of the really rich guys around here. He drives a Hummer still, like a 2008, like whatever the last year they made the in. H2 Hummer. He just drives that thing and loves it. Like he takes such good care of it. And I was thinking to myself, that thing has got to cost him so much in gas. And then I remembered he doesn't care. He's rich. Doesn't matter. Mm. But anyway, so new new topic. What do you guys think about the Liver King? I think he's, he's my absolute favorite, man. I you know like that. Him. You yeah. know I get my daily dose of oh, Liver King. Oh, I got I, I love him, but I also have like, you know, what I've analyzed about him. What what do you guys think? Dude, he reminds me of like so you know how Alex Jones is like super political. He's like, like almost delirious. Yeah. yeah. He reminds me of that, but primal method. And I maybe could think of a few other examples, but he's just so like, yep, yep, fucking primal. Yep, yep. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that guy's just, jacked, yeah. man. Obviously jacked that way in physically, but like jacked up just on energy. Like he's just like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's about it. He is. So Liver King's actually becoming a little bit more mainstream now. More and more people yeah, are finding out about him, but we've been on, we've been we'll on Liver King for, for a, a while, couple yeah. months now. And uh, we even have a group chat called Primals, and he's, <laughs> yeah. he's the profile picture. Yeah, dude, he is. We'll text, a we'll whole text each other. Level of Jackson. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll text each other in the morning. Did everyone get their daily dose of Liver, Liver King? King? Cause he hits like Primals. every morning. You just gotta watch his Instagram. Honestly, it's hard to explain. But what, so here's, so he preaches like the ancestra- ancestral yeah, living. I think this is a very strategic business play that they have placed within the last six months. And they are absolutely playing it by the book and is going perfectly for them. They are crushing it. So he's out here, you know, just doing Instagram posts, whatever. And he gets all these followers and he's just like absurd. You know, he's mm-hmm. just ridiculous. And he says all these crazy things and, and you just can't stop looking at him because he's such a, he's so jacked and he's just yelling in the way he <laughs> talks. He has basically created this character, right? Mm-hmm. And he says that he's all natural and he lives like the ancestral ways. And he eats all this stuff, and it shows him. I, I'd like to actually see him finish the food in front of him. When they do like the thing, he's got like twelve patties, uh, a bunch of liver, a steak, um, you know, all this di- a bone, like two bone marrow things. Like, well, he does do. Uh, if, does if, if you really, if thing? you really scroll back in his Instagram, he would actually do time lapse of him eating all of them. Really? Okay, so that's what I want to see. I want to see just a raw video of him actually eating all that because so I almost wonder sometimes if they're just put a bunch of food in front of him and then he eats it. I mean, I'm sure to a point, but dude, I watched the video of him drinking. 52 50. raw eggs. eggs. Did he do them like individually? Yeah. All in shots. At once. All in shots. He had 52. Really? That's actually in no, no cuts, nothing. It's just <sighs> so one that's consecutive right. video. That was crazy. Well, see, I would like to see like more of that. I guess I haven't seen that one, but yeah. um, there are some I that think, he doesn't finish and some that he does. I think, yeah. I mean, like, he is about it. You, no, he you is can't about be, it. Obviously. You can't be that educated and like live that lifestyle no. and not I, really be about it. But I think it's still. Uh, he's pushing it to the edge, and I, I do honestly. I'm, I hate being a hater, and I'm not being a hater. I fucking think he's the man, and I don't even care if anyone uses steroids. But this whole thing that he's saying he's natural, I just don't. I'm, I'm not buying it. I'd just like to see a test because if he was natural and he keeps saying it, I would fucking be showing things all the time. But he hasn't came out and showed anything that he's natural. Mm. Also, it's like when you do steroids, your organs they like expand. And that's why his gut is so, like, pressed out like that. Hmm. Or it's because he just ate 50 fucking Possibly. raw eggs. Possibly. But uh, anyway. Maybe so, we'll never know. But then it's like, so at first I was like, whatever. This guy's just doing his thing. And someone's filming. His wife is just filming him on portrait mode right Liver on their queen. camera roll. Yep. And he's just yelling at the camera. And Grounded. Doing his videos and people are loving it. But then when he starts doing his, what am I eating for lunch today? And then it's this, this, this. A whole beast, a beast, he, which he's selling. So now he's selling. And we just product. promoted it. Yep, and it's working. And honestly, I'd love to try it. 
I have n- I fucking love liquor, liver king. I think he's the man. Liquor. I don't I don't care. <laughs> there needs to be a liquor king. Liquor king. That, that could be Mike. <laughs> Mike I'm is the, the liquor king. king. I'm the liquor king. No, I'm drunk. not fit for that. <laughs> okay. Anyways, sorry, back to the liver king. But then he, he ends it. And, he's like, and of course, the liver king bar. I don't know exactly what it's called. But he's selling like all these nutritional supplements now. And instead of a testicle, you eat the testicle uh, little supplement powder that he's got. So Why my point, eat a vegetable when you could eat a testicle? Right. Does I think it that? is. I think this yeah. whole thing is genius marketing. I think that he is on steroids. I still think it's awesome. Um, and lastly, like it is awesome that he's all about his ancestral ways and that he thinks that we need to revert back to them. Which, like, you know, I agree. I think we have kind of swayed a little bit f- too far from them. But also at the same time, like, not wearing sunscreen, not wearing a shirt the whole time, shit like that. You do realize our ancestors only lived till they were like thirty five. Like if you lived till you're thirty five, <laughs> like that was like a pretty set. long that was a pretty long life. So real like I, I think mean, that's definitely we gotta find a, a happy middle. I don't know lot. if he does. No, but, he gets oh, he, he comments people back say on that? it. Yeah. No. I don't remember his logic back. No, and, but, and I'm not trying to be a hater. Nope. I think he's awesome. If I if I would love to meet him, I would love to talk to him, but that's just like my immediate thoughts and maybe he could like answer it, but I do find it. Funny, I though. think he's a genius re- marketer. He's repping this ancestral lifestyle and saying like everything needs to be homegrown and organic and walks everywhere barefoot. And then he's got a, a $200,000 AP watch on flying I private agree. jets. I agree. It is just kind of like. I agree. But then that, he, see, he has something bad but he's for a, that too. And he's dude, like, imagine this. This yeah, dude yeah, was just. You're making a life worth living, which I understand. I, I get that. But he's, I don't know. Imagine yeah. this. This dude was just a gym rat. Mm-hmm. Typical gym rat. There's That's what one I do imagine. Every That's big what town I imagine. Before, six months ago, he was just this gym rat. And some really rich business people that want to start a supplement company, where they look around. They come up with this genius plan. We're going to do this ancestral living thing. I don't. I highly doubt this will happen, but it just, just hear me out. Mm-hmm. And they go, let's go and start scoping out the gyms for the right guy. They find him. They're like, yo. You want to be crazy. you want to be the face and the character of this? You just got to basically take your act shoes this off way. and say grounded. Yeah. I and think that's the case, that. but I think he came up with it on his own. No, I agree. I but agree. I, CJ, I like, that was a pretty good uh I do. A, I I think but that's the I case. Think, good little theory you came up with. No, he's there. just a genius marker. That's I, my yeah. my theory on it. I and think I'm all his, about uh, that. His whole uh character he's created is about as like bullshit as like Beyonce and Jay Z's marriage, like the whole, you know, it's just a marketing whoa, scheme. Whoa, whoa, not the marriage. Whoa, sorry, sorry. Mike. Not the marriage. The the you trying to get this show canceled no, here. The fight that they created. actually, I, I don't think anyone watching right now yeah. gives a single fuck. But <laughs> but certain it, people would. It's like crazy huge things that literally define your life to the masses. Um, that just makes you money. Like I saw this one video of him. He was outside, right? He was like, "We're, you know." growing our connection deeper and, and all this stuff with his family. And then we're taking a, a we're going to be taking a 15 minute nap on the, on the ground under the sun. And then it like shows him so like, weird. it shows him in like the next, next like uh story. It's just a video of him laying like on the dirt underneath a tree. And then he had a log as his <laughs> pillow. <laughs> I'm like, surely this guy didn't sleep like this. They took the video and he got up. I he might have though, man, for the last time. Genius marketer. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. I do agree with that. Fucking genius marketer. Yeah. Ryan and I were just watching something that could be put into that same category of, you know, the primal building. It's like usually time lapses. You've of seen two. those, yeah, the Thailand guys that dig the whole pool you and know, all the houses all and all that stuff. Handmade tools. Those guys got to get done with that and then go back to their $10 million mansions. Yeah. Not not even, just wait. You hear the, the thing. Unfortunately, it's on. not even like that. You tell it. So yeah, I, I started pop on the, TikTok. Pop the video up though. You gotta yeah, like explain. Yeah, these anyone who has ever gotten drunk or high and went on Facebook has definitely watched. I don't know one of if they videos. would have because I've on, never seen it before. Really? You guys showed oh, me. I've watched, and I, I watch so many you different do. things. So just it's, explain what it it's is. It's actually also on, it's more of like a if you sign in to, or don't sign, sign into YouTube. If you just go to YouTube and you then find so down many different people, doesn't YouTube seem so? You feel like you've got it pretty covered on the platform if you're under your account. But if you go to YouTube unlogged in the whole homepage is a bunch of people you've never, never even heard, heard of before and then so every single time i do that i find out that mr beast has a new 
channel that he just started that yeah. only has 10 million subscribers instead oh, of 100. Poor guy. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah. yeah, these these basically they're time-lapse videos of two guys generally in Thailand or some country in that area. Pop them up, just show yeah, a little clips I'll, over I'll on the podcast a, for the video. I'll put a thing viewers. in the middle. And that's all the ones I'd seen, but apparently there's like 10 or 20 of these channels. Yeah, and they just dig a pool, or they start, and they're like digging, making a pool, and now the titles have gotten ridiculously out of hand. Let's take a pause. I got to read one. Here's one with 212 views in two months. That's 200 true. days 200, building a model. Wait, 212 up, million or 212? 212 million. Okay, you missed okay. the million part. Oh, 212 right. million. That's right. damn near All right. how many I was, views our whole I was channel like, has. That's got to be the lowest counted video on YouTube that of people doing Dude, this. No. It's just, they're so build, shareable. Build most wonderful mud villa, twin, wa twin water slide, gorgeous swimming pool, and pool top. 44 like million views. Listing. And they almost yeah. list it like they don't know English, but they... Are I don't very know if they do, of, dude. No, they do. Like India and Thailand is All like right. the next closest. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So get videos. to the point here, Ryan. What are these anyway. people living good or bad? So great. Somebody exposed they're, they're obviously them. making a lot of money because they're they're making these time lapse videos that appear to be relatively cheap to make, and they are pulling incredible view numbers. Forty four million dollars is like enough or, to or live views. off of for a whole year. Yeah. And have a good life. Like you could yeah. probably live off that for years. So they're also keep in mind they're wearing like a skirt, barefoot, mm -hmm. no yeah. shoes. They look and, like they live in a third like, world and country. It, and, and it looks like no they're concrete. living they're yes. living in this. Correct. And like they're so making this to now yeah. people have figured out and they go, Man, there's no way these people can be making these. And so uh, as the internet sleuths do, they go in and they start investigating them. And uh, they've slipped up a couple times in videos where they it shows the guys digging and then it cuts to the next shot. Well, you can see excavator tracks that pull up and then have dug and then the guys go back in and start digging a little bit and then they make get their shots. They pull out, excavator comes in. And so someone that actually works at those companies goes, it is still pretty impressive that we'll have, they said, no less than a a dozen That's, or two dozen? They said a or no dozen. More. That's the other part is that keep in mind, it's never just two guys. It's never just one guy. It's never just three guys. As they have portrayed. It's multiple people. But they come in with these crews and in like a week, they'll build these villas that you see, but just a large crew of people will do yeah. it. And they completely sell it as two dudes out there with their sticks. Just like blood, chisels. Sweat and tears. Yeah, chisels and not using an ax, like sharpening a rock. And then cutting down the tree. Talk about genius, freaking yeah, strategic right. play. So, so have like, they talked about the the people behind it though? Do they even know their names? Like, do they know their names? They probably don't. Their mm -hmm. living situations. Are they the ones running it or like uh, calling the shots? I or is most, it just a douche canoe from L.A. flying over there and yeah, setting up cast GoPros? Two guys, yeah, that's how some I would them. assume it is. Is it some dude probably in Thailand? Because some guy in Australia actually did it and built primitive huts that look like they were primitively built and got crazy views on it. He's the one who started it. And so it. people copied that format. And when they copied that format, I assume it's a bunch of billionaires or millionaires, and they go, this is what you guys are going to do. And they go hire some guys to go out there and do it. Because they it said is. that all of their, uh, their channel was their IP address was in the States. Their uh, yes. YouTube ranking was all based on United States. They were USA creators, but they weren't creating in the US. You want to know something that I've learned over time is just like what you see isn't always what it really is. Mm -hmm. And like like what you were saying, a lot of this stuff, there's, there's some guy or an investor, whoever, there's investors, and then there's some guy running it in LA, and they casted some people, and those people are the fa like, there's so many things that are so, so much deeper than how, as they appear to be. Mm -hmm. I think that's very common, honestly, like mm -hmm. nowadays with even that kind of stuff, but it's almost you're like so when, right. You're so right. There's probably some producer that's that's running the whole show, and initially there's two investors. Those guys literally sit on their ass in their million dollar homes in, yep. in California on the beach, and Tune in for the 35-minute video of some dudes digging. Yeah, they're like, yeah, check out this one this week. And they're running multiple different channels mm -hmm. like that. I think it's like when they figured that are out replicable. That, that, yeah, on YouTube that they're like, wait, so it doesn't cost any money to just like put 
whatever works on YouTube. You know, they're obviously looking for whatever works. Right, you just got to put some money in. You know, normally if they were like, yeah, I want to invest in a show. Well, that show's got to get a pilot, got to get pitched to freaking Discovery and then made on. But they're like, I never thought about it like that as far as like an investor. I never thought about it. Yeah, like, like some dude being like, watching youtube and the algorithm but also not wanting to youtube himself and then just hiring it out and like pushing this whole thing and like making it work dude it's you true. guys should see like some of this it's just insane some of these channels though it, i mean mr beast is the biggest like he's the best no, at i understand it, but there's so many other channels that you've never even heard of like this girl Re- rebecca zamolo she popped up on my home page when i lo- when i hopped on youtube and i wasn't logged in it, a full-grown woman like she looks like she's probably like 35 maybe 40 and she makes these videos transforming into a superhero for my daughter like mr beast type of thumbnail i clicked the video i'm like i gotta see what 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 is she doing and it was all so scripted it was like a whole production like i was like watching the cuts and i was like it's so obvious They're like okay now you say this because they already had the storyline this is basically typical. youtube is turning into this like reality type of tv or whatever and if you just can find that like i guarantee you just little kids watch that Mm -hmm. right like very little kids typical but there's an there's an audience for it in a non-perverted way just to to bait kids to watch fucking nonsense Mm -hmm. yeah bro they're in it's just like a children's show like any children's show and i'm not saying all the children's shows on youtube are nonsense but dude i've seen a lot of like reactions to just really cringy channels. And I think the most depressing part about it is that they have millions upon 10 millions of views and they just dilute themselves into some weird fashion of content to make a lot of money. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't be doing that. I'm just making fun of it. Yeah. I guess the thing about that is though, is like, those people are straight up just working. They ain't probably enjoying it. Like oh, they're just working right. for a paycheck. Yeah. And, and it kind of is what it is. Like if it if it works, they're just like, oh, it works. You know, it's that's just our just audience. I bet at the, this point, I'm yeah. sure they're not just that's like. That's my point. Yeah, it's this like, is awesome. Right. It's like almost that's what's cool show. about Mr. Beast is he has lived it since day one. He's so genuine on it. Even though he's doing the most outrageous things, there's teams behind it, whatever. But he is. Yeah. The dude. No, realistically. But even his videos are like the same. Like when I watch, and I'm not discounting him at all, but when I watch, it's so clear to me that they had a storyline and there are they probably had a list of shots to get. And I think they went and did those for the most part. Because like you watch, it just, not all of it seems authentic. Like, like the last video where he went without eating or whatever, like the intro and stuff was very like obviously like you're going to say this and then I'll say this. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean... But that's how they no, pump sure. him out. That's how they pump him out so much. Like, he goes in there... But that's also how the, it works, though. His, like, they had the script and everything on how he was going to film it. And, and yeah, then I guess the other... You, obviously, the other stuff he ran. He just... that That's where it gets running gun. But even his, to a point, are relatively pretty structured out. Well, he's talked about that, like, on podcasts before. He'll have, like, a base structure of, like, this is... All right, this is what I'm going to say. And then pan over to Chris or whatever. And he's even said like my, most of my crew is so fast. Like they're just so witty. They'll just say stuff like unscripted and it just works that way. But he said, that's the hardest part about filming with all these randos that come in is they don't know the story. They don't know the story. They don't know how to talk to the camera, nothing like that. So he was like, it's very, very difficult to have these randos act as actors and it just doesn't work like that. So he was like, we couldn't fake these things. Like, you can mm-hmm. tell it's, like, pretty awkward, you know, like, the people yeah. winning all this money and shit. It unfortunately does yeah, seem amazing, like I love the more that you script or storytell or exaggerate or stuff like that, it seems to work for the larger audience. And I yeah. hate this because it's almost kind of like in movie theater. I'm sure a true movie buff hates a Marvel movie. Because they're like, this is so fake. This is dumb. The storyline's dumb. It's all just, you know, some guy at a film festival is like, Marvel movies suck. But people watch them. And it's kind of the same way with YouTube. You could almost go to ours. You go, well, yeah, we've been working for years and years and years and have amassed 1.5 million subscribers. But if we went in and we went, 
hey guys, today we are going to build a quad snowmobile and then we're going to jump it. Yeah, and then took out all the swearing and he did and everything very just cut to the... Yeah, and the, we went in, we had a whole team behind that built a snowmobile that actually freaking worked <laughs> and, you know, did all the things in the background to make it all great and you had a thing at the end, whatever. If you If you scripted it out like that, probably would get more views and probably more people watch it. But to a point, it's like, who do you want to be? Do you yeah, want to live? No. It's like almost the further away you get said. from uh, being who you're portraying, the better it works. Yes, exactly. And the problem is, like is you have to actually act. being it. And right, like and I fucking think all Liver of us, King, dude, he's like, exactly. Primo. It's like if you go back to his at, to his earlier videos, he's like, "Good morning, uh, I'm gonna be showing what I'm eating today," and he's like, mm. uh, "This, that, and that," and now he's like. Eating a whole beast and yelling and stuff because he's being that character yeah. because it sells. And the more it sells, the more you get into it. But I mean, and circling and the back more you around have to too. keep doing it. But that's the thing is we, uh, with us, I would say you, uh, we don't really go down that path because it's like every day you have to get up and act. It's the most, we are the most yeah. genuine versions of ourselves, and you've seen it grow throughout the last six years where we have changed as people but it, it, we just honestly, are who we are. I think it would be easier if you were showing up though, and there was already a camera crew and like a whole set, True. and they and obviously it wouldn't work for what we're doing. But let's just imagine you were an act, and obviously acting's hard too. But they were like, "Here's a script," and then he stood behind, and they had to like all the shots set up. Like, all right, your line is, uh, "Hand me the ten millimeter wrench, Micah," and you're like, "Hey, Mike, can you hand me the ten millimeter wrench?" That'd, That'd be, be pretty so fucking boring, easy. Dude. It'd be very boring, but it'd be like way less stressful. Yeah, because you got to show up in a good mood around and here. I guess, yeah, dude, I could, could but, not. But, do that. Right, this is better. And also, then the worst part is the worst part is is that that format you just talked about is probably making us ten, not, five times the money that what we're doing right now makes us. So then, does it seem easier? Yeah, it does. But yeah, it just but then come you... come such a less admirable creator. Exactly. That's right. what I mean. You got guys at film festivals that are living in vans and they're making something that they're really proud of and are genuine. And that people in the scene are really are loving like, wow, too. Wow, that's but, amazing. But I and think circling back onto heads. like the idea of a, a bigger person with more money having an idea, like that's an interesting uh, take on it. And I really just applaud the people like Mr. Beast or uh, like Ryan Trahan for, and he didn't. Ryan Trahan didn't in, invent his the whole like live on a penny thing. But I just love seeing creators invent a new. Um, addicting type of content mm -hmm. that's actually good to watch, like a new format. So, that works. Yeah, new format that works because seeing someone create something new that that hasn't been done before that then works and is super entertaining, you like almost can't put a price on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen the Ryan Trahan Penny series, go and watch it. It's insane. Incredible. But basically, he lived off of one single penny, and all the profits made from the penny is what he used to pay for food sleeping and Crossing traveling the whole u.s all the way from california yep. to mr beast in north carolina mm -hmm. but crazy and he also pulled like 250 million views in one month and raised 1.5 million dollars for feeding america yeah that's all one of those simultaneously in a month so, th so there's 30 videos well i haven't watched all 30 videos and maybe you don't have time to either but you'll watch like one or two or three or four and you'll go I kind of want to watch all 30 videos because it's that good and it's that refreshing. I mm -hmm. just love seeing stuff like that. Yeah. Dude, the fact that he made or pulled 250 million views in one month, putting zero dollars into his content is insanely impressive. I agree. But also like That's insane. that they were able to output him like that that's at true. that level. Because back in the day when daily vlogs were popular, the it's quality different. of the videos were just... They weren't anywhere near what he did, what they are now, or let alone what he was doing. Like he was still producing quality videos day after day because, and obviously he had a filmer that would follow him around. So he was being himself and being entertaining. The filmer is filming him, following him everywhere. And then they have a guy that's, that's an editor back home getting all the footy and, and no, his editor was with him. Oh, he just oh, rolled really? with his editor was with him in a van. And he would just drive to each location and just edit in the van all day. Bro, oh that and, sounds and edit so miserable. For the next day. Yeah, for, but I guess yeah. he would do like 12 hours a day. Frick, dude. So you're doing that every day for 30, 30 days. 
But the thing about Ryan Trahan is he doesn't strike me as a guy who's really chasing the money or Mm-mm. or anything like that, or even like the fame. I think he just genuinely likes making YouTube videos. I watched an interview with him, and that's kind of what he was saying. And like I he each, did that all as a fundraiser. Yeah, like that's pretty cool. So just think how much money he lost there, or not lost, but he gave away. If if all your ad rev goes in a fundraiser, no, it wasn't. He he raised money additionally. The one point five million was uh, community donations. He, I believe, matched. No, I know, I saw subs. that. Oh, so your Say ad rev so. doesn't go with it. No, no, okay. well, not in this. Never case. mind. It then could. he just made a shit ton if of he, money. If he wanted to, he could absolutely donate that. And he I'm probably made. Should I think he's like, donating how much another money like two hundred fifty grand like a for million his two and a half million bucks subscribers this, this month. Yep. yep. What, dude? He probably pulled in or two three, million bucks. Three million. Three million dollars. Wow. Three million. Oh. And then he then he got. Uh, and then 1.5 million donated just through people clicking the donate button. It's insane, yeah. dude. Which he is could also take off the crazy. next fucking years. Interesting, like with imagine stuff. he just quits. <laughs> he just he's hangs like, it I'm up. investing. Hey, my he's bag, like, I'm hey. the market's down right now, and I'm planning on you know just capitalizing when it comes back. He was like, I. Uh, he likes making YouTube videos. I don't I, think he cares. No, I know, but imagine he's just like that was the hardest shit I've ever done in my life, and I'm so burnt out on making YouTube videos. I just don't think I want to do it anymore. Everyone would be or like, or he was just like, that was like the Michael, hardest shit, but now I'll never have to do anything again. Yeah, but it'd be like Michael Jordan going out on the top. That's, That'd be pretty legendary. But he it said he was taking a break. When do you get out? Do you get out at the top? Do you ride and no. you fall down? Because you never know. know. It you depends could, you could, on. You could quit I mean, and this like not be anywhere near you your can top. Stay it, though. This like circles back around to the type of content you're making and how admirable it is and how much you like it. You know, like if you when do you get out? Well, if you're making uh, weird kid videos and you don't enjoy it, don't you don't enjoy it, and you're not even yourself, and it's just all like for money. I'd say you get out when you can. <laughs> Like when yeah, you but get people out with like the Logan money. Paul, he might not be as relevant or as popular as he was at his peak, but he'll I bet you he'll be able to post a video and still at least pull a million views mm-hmm. because yeah. people care and also people just don't And he's an as example As long as the of, video's still good, like as long as you can keep making like pretty decent entertaining videos, people will continue to follow along. It's like I would be interested to listen to a podcast. I was thinking about this before this. I was like, "Man, Bam Margera does no there's really no interviews. There's really no way to really see or hear. Like he's only done a couple podcasts and I've listened to both of them and I was very entertained by it because as a kid, I just, for some reason I idolized Bam because he was so cool on his show. Obviously nowadays you probably don't want to, but uh, like think about that, you know, realistically he could probably pop out and I guarantee you he would be able to pull a decent just because he has such a large fan base Mm -hmm. of people who are just genuinely interested in him. Yeah, but then you always have to be doing something entertaining, right, which is but exhausting. Ex- it is. And you but always I, have to be making good videos because otherwise somebody watches a video and it's shit. They're like, eh, they're like kind of turned oh, off. this guy isn't a legend anymore. Yeah, like, true. I don't know. I don't know. I think there's a, a line like. Well, there's like specifics. I yeah, think like for someone. I agree. I guess to just dive a little deeper into it. For someone like Bam Mar- Margera, if you were famous on TV. At, at that time, then I think the least you could do is a podcast. And if you don't want to do that, that's okay. But I like, I yeah. think, you know, like Dude, if there's you so many people that would want said, Pam to come let on. Let me our tell podcast. you a story about these uh, two episodes. And then next week, I'll tell you a story about these two episodes. I'd listen to it because mm-hmm. it'd be fun. Just telling stories, which right. is like a think beautiful about, thing that let's you can say make Hulk money Hogan. On it. Dude, if yeah. Hulk Hogan started a podcast or he hopped example. on a podcast, a lot of people would listen. A lot of people, even I would, and I'm I I didn't even really grow up in the era of him wrestling and watching him, but but it'd just be entertaining and and interesting. A lot of people, especially if if you were in the media like pretty heavily at one point, and then now no one has any access or insight to what you're doing. They, people were interested. Uh, o- only with certain I, people. I only disagree. With certain people, I, just to, I actually just I disagree because I think. So many people see that, especially the podcast. Now it's like everyone and their cousin has a podcast. For us, makes sense. We're content creators. It's for us. But people that have just like not done anything for five years, or they like kind of got like washed. I'm They're saying like, Hulk, quit making YouTube Hulk Hogan videos. Goes on Joe Rogan's podcast. It's gonna blow up. That yeah, one would be but a it's, blow up. It's different That's than if just Hulk Hogan started his own oh. podcast. 
Yeah, I mean, it's because there's so many people I think that just start podcasts now just because it's like the the thing to do, the thing to do, or the trendy. And they think thing it's to gonna do. be easy. They think it's easy. It's like, hey, you can just use your fame and likeness, and like you'll get views. It's to hard. You gotta point, come out here but, and drink an energy drink, maybe two, and then yeah, yeah. You but sit down a lot and of these guys, like, if shit, they're but. if they were a celebrity before, like, basically a producer comes to them, and then they put the team together, and they just show up, and they'll have like talking points and stuff, like. No shade towards Mike Tyson, but that's totally the, the deal with them. Like, he has a, a crew that came, and they're like, hey, we got an idea that can make you some money. All you got to do is sit in and talk. Yeah. It's a podcast. And then they got all the equipment. They got the camera. They hired everyone, hired the editors. They produced the whole thing, come up with talking points, get the ads, all that. Mike shows up, like, and talks to people. Like, that's that's a pretty common thing nowadays. True. And it goes back to, like, kind of what I was saying earlier. Like, you look at people that are starting these that are running these things in the back end. The only problem with that is, is you can do something and survive on it, or you can reinvent it and grow larger from it. Yeah. Like let's, I'm going to use Logan Paul as an example. He started out and he could have done a podcast and rode out his level of fame and just dwindled off till nobody cared about him and then be done. But he reinvented a podcast. He made it entertaining to watch he gained a new audience, myself included, gained a new audience, and then also along the way goes, all right, I've been podcasting for a few years now. We're good. I'm going to get into boxing. Maybe he's, he might be chasing passions, but these passions are calculated. He goes into boxing, ups his I think he again. was doing the boxing before the podcast. Well, he started his first boxing, but then he launched the podcast. But yeah, he was. That, that's what I mean. He kept growing it. He yeah. kept growing. He could have came on and went, all know. right, me and, me and my six buddies that live in this house, we're just going to talk. I'm going to pay the bills for a while be done but he came in and he reinvented and he constantly wanted to grow and i think that's what makes it good you got we didn't listen to it and go yeah those 20 podcasts were cool but just kind of got over it you know or nothing new happened and then it went i think that is the big takeaway from content today is reinventing mm -hmm. and i'll even say this like if you were a big movie star and then let's say you even started youtubing and it went well and you reinvented once, and then you could even die from that. And if you reinvent again, and obviously it goes well, because a lot of times it doesn't, you can come back from that. Like you can, in a sense, reinvent yourself as many times as, as the, you come the up mass with good will let you. You know, as as many times as you can pop off. Like YouTube and social media will let you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes it's not always. Sometimes maybe you might reinvent yourself for the worse or mm -hmm. the better, but like you can always reinvent as long as it's something fresh and entertaining. That's what's, that just blows my mind. And it's so hard. And sometimes when people are like, how'd you make it on YouTube? I'm like, dude, we just got lucky, man. I mean, I'm talking like right away, right away. Like before we put thought and and a ton of work into it or enough work to make it equal a full-time job. It's like, you just, we just got lucky, you know, things, yeah, but you got to work hard till you get lucky. And you got to take risks. Yeah. So you get yeah. risks and chances. Take, yeah, take risks for take sure. Take risk. And then once you get lucky, the hardest part is actually doing something with it. Yeah. Yeah, and exactly. You, that's what I mean. You get to the level and you, you got to you got to do gotta, something. You got to actually the hardest harder than ma than like getting there is maintaining it, honestly. Mm -hmm. The that's kind of harder enough you on, work, the luckier you get. So you uh, just got that hanging up on as well. I mm -hmm. totally yeah. agree. So it's slightly off topic, I just want to say I'm so glad to be back working again. Because mm -hmm. going back to we were on that four day bender or three day bender, we took like a slight break when we came back from filming. We we have four videos in the bank right now, guys. So f that means they're filmed and everything, which is a lot of work typically to like film a whole video and get it. You know, just a lot of moving components. The only thing you need to do now is just edit it. Um, so that's good. That means we're two weeks out if we were doing two videos a week. So anyways, we got back from our trip and we took this break and then also happened to be the 4th of July weekend. And, uh, I was having, I was enjoying it, man. I was like Friday, I did nothing. I did, it didn't go out. I just hung inside with Alex Saturday, hit it hard. Went on the lake all day, bunch of friends over, we're drinking, whatever Sunday, same exact thing. And then Monday comes rolling around and I'm like, all right. I've been fucking off for like three days now and I kind of want to just get back to like doing something productive. I'm, I, and it kind of goes back into like the trust fund kids, like being the, the most messed up and like saddest. It's cause they don't have anything like anything to do. 
Like they they have too much freedom. Like you gotta have something. Like you gotta get up and do. Mm-hmm. Keeps you you know straight, and then you appreciate that free time. But anyways, on the last day, which was the fourth of July, I was like, I kind of want to just like not do this and just go and go to work, which is I guess good. Mm-hmm. But no, we were. Did all you guys feel that, that or okay? Yeah, dude, I mean, we were all. And I had that. so many yeah. people over at our, our house, which was fine. To keep going, but which was fine. I love all my friends. Um, but yeah, like, there was no option. Yeah, I, especially it's after weekend benders like that, multiple days of drinking or like not doing anything. Like on Tuesday this week, we were still kind of like had an had an off day, and I was just trying to just chill. So the leading up like three weeks to that was like video, video, merch drop, yeah. travel, trip. We get back Fourth uh, of July weekend bender, and Tuesday was like the first day of like finally off. And I was just like, had anxiety of like not working where I was like, I should be chilling right now and just like trying to relax, but I just like can't. And I don't know if that's due to like the alcohol and and it's like, you're kind of in like a low, you know, it's like the Sunday scaries or if it was just like, I'm just so used to like not having a day off or like being busy. I was just like driving around in my car and I was like, what the fuck am I doing right now? Like I should be working. Where are the boys at? I can't afford this car. We're the boys. We got to make some videos yeah. to make some money. And then we shouldn't be taking a day off. We don't need a day off. And I was just like, wait, maybe that's, we maybe we do this. need a day off. And there's like days that are easier and harder. Like, oh, you got like an easy day of work tomorrow or an easy day of whatever you want to call that we do do. But like, do you got a, a long day? I'm like, any day I want to be can be as long as it can be. Mm-hmm. You know, like, let's say I just chuck my phone in the pond. And, you know, didn't go on social media and shit because sometimes I catch myself doing that. Any day can be as long as I want it to be and as busy as I want it to be, which I don't know how long that would last being like a freaking trust fund baby. But like, I love that. Like the to do list is as long as the day is long. Normally, the to do list seems longer. You should Normally you should become a trust fund baby, Mike. You should. All right. Comment down below if you want me to become a trust fund baby. You could be a trust fund baby doing. You a, just become a, one. A yeah, deep, I decided one no, day. I'd can be a you trust imagine fund. seeing a link to a GoFundMe and then you go click on it and read the description and it's just like, yeah, I'm just trying to become a trust fund baby. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should start my one, dude. Go fund me, dude. Uh, and no, no, I know we for some reason got on trust fund talk this podcast. No hate towards any of the trust fund kids that are around here that we were referring to. Honestly, they're all nice. Like yeah. I don't have anything. And there is such a thing as. There is absolutely such a thing as a trust fund baby that starts things even bigger than their parents did. Yeah. That, that's a, that's accurate. But yeah. I'm sweating. I was like, it's it's hotter than hot shit here. up here. See, so guys, you just uh, want to keep Friday. going? Yeah, I guess it's just me and Mike now. All right. You guys want to just end it? Because I'm going to hit it. Hey, yeah. real quick, though, actually, before we end, Ryan, I'd like to congratulate you <laughs> on getting a Mountain Dew sponsorship. Thanks, As in, dude. we all got a Mountain Dew sponsorship, but, but it most, means the most to you. you. It does, dude. I've been training my whole life for that. We've slugging been making them. jokes, slugging yep. Mountain Dews. And I think the cool thing is, is that you guys see it. We do ads for uh, plenty of different companies, but it was really cool <laughs> and just like almost relieving doing one for Mountain Dew. And the comments like, on yeah, it were like yeah. just proud. People like, yeah. when do we ever do a promotion for and anyone happy. That, that like fans or friends come up and like... You particularly congratulate Ryan, but all of us. They're like, "Yo, yeah, that's man, so congrats. sick on the Mountain Dew." Yeah, it's just like we cool literally posted it. an ad. You weren't annoyed. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah, and I guess I shouldn't say sponsorship. More, More brand, brand deal. Brand deal. But Close still, though. hey, so step in the right direction, and uh, I'm happy for you, man. I knew that toll on my body would pay off one day. <laughs> it did it just? It just goes to show. Never, never stop working. Never stop drinking right. the dew. Never give up on your dreams. Never give up on your dreams, kids. And that's a good note to end on, boys. All right. Everyone hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much. We love you all.